Henry was at the works, but he looked rather glum. Oh dear, he thought, I'll never be the same engine again. Don't be observed, Henry, chuckled Sir Tom Hat. It's just a loose regulator, and it'll be cool once it's mended again. He's right, smiled Peter Sam sweetly. You'll be on the rails like, just like a new engine again. The Henry I knew, added Thomas, would do just that. Henry smiled, knowing he had good friends in both Peter Sam, Rusty, and Thomas. This surely wouldn't have happened if Duck hadn't fooled me with those tenders, he snapped coldly. Calm now, sued Rusty. I'm sure Duck meant no harm. Just then, they heard a familiar whistle. And George chuffed in, snickering. What's this green olive doing at the works? He chortled. You know, with him out of the way. We roads can finally have an advantage. No more railways, roads are superior. Henry began to feel sad again. Don't listen to that good for nothing steamroller, as Thomas stepped in. You're more stronger than he knows. Soon his regulator was mended and Henry could build up steam. This is more like it, he thought as he puffed happily away. His driver tried to calm him down. We're in no rush, Henry. But Henry was so excited to be out of the works, he couldn't listen. He even managed to surprise Duck along the way. Don't be taking so many tenders this time, Henry, Duck called cheekily. Henry was about to reply when he saw up ahead was Daisy with a long train of coal cars. What on earth happened to you? He asked. Daisy was too embarrassed to reply. Her driver spoke up. Sir Topham Hatt has asked us to take these coal cars to the mine, but this old so Lazy Daisy kept sulking about pulling cars, stating it's bad for her. Swerves, cried Daisy in a huff. I know that. You don't have to go on about it. Hey, that's enough, old girl, snapped her driver, or I'll confine you to the shed with Sir Totten Hat. Don't suppose you could give us a hand, huh, Henry? He asked. Well, stammered Henry, I s suppose I could. Just as Henry buffered up to Daisy, Boko rushed through with the express. He seems in a hurry, Henry told Daisy. Daisy didn't say anything, but then they heard coughing, which Boko spluttered to a stop. The air brakes in the coaches have failed, cried the guard. The coaches are now too heavy. Boko looked at his buffers in shame. Now how are we going to get these passengers to the station on time? Well, you won't believe this, joked Henry's crew. That's when the headlamp for two failed diesels, smiled Henry. But I believe I can rescue both trains and get them to the station on time. Are you sure? Asked his driver, it'll be a lot of work. I'll have a good try, smiled Henry. After all, Boko is better than Daisy, after all. Daisy snorted. Then, with a heavy heave, Henry pulled Daisy towards Boko. They were soon coupled up, and their cr crews refitted the air brakes. Now Henry could move the train with Boko pulling from in front. Do, do, are you ready? Boko called. Beep, beep. Yes, I am, whistled Henry. Then, puffing hard, Henry began to move the train. Boko heaved and roared as he began to help too.
Edward and Stepney were talking at the big station, when to their surprise, Boko heaved into the station with Henry and Daisy in tow. Henry was all out of breath, but proud nonetheless. Sir Topham Hatt came out of his office and was speechless. At last, Edward broke the silence. Well done, Henry, he cried. Then, Boko's passengers hurried out of the coaches and took Henry's picture, calling him an enterprising engine. Your Henry, they called to Sir Topham Hatt, is a hero. They also gave thanks to Boko, too. Soon, Stepney took the passengers away, much to their pleasure. And Edward took the goods it's to the mainland. Later, Daisy and Henry were alone. I'm sorry about the delay, murmured Daisy sadly. Oh, don't worry, Daisy, comforted Henry. I failed as well. With a broken regulator, you see. You've also failed, Daisy said speechless. But how? Well, smiled Henry. As Sir Totten Hat quotes, trains must get through, whatever the emergency is. Daisy had a lot to think about.